as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto your fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. You want to start a new business? You want to branch out on a new horizon. You want to step out on a different threshold. You want to be adventurous and see what God has for you. You want to try God and see where he may lead you. Possibilities that you never even envisioned for yourself before. Guess what? It's a whole new world for you, baby. It may be hell on wheels out there in the streets. It may be hell on wheels out there in the government and maybe hell on wheels in the banking system but god has a whole new world for you baby he's got possibilities for you that you would never be able to set up for yourself he knows how to set you up with divine appointments he knows how to measure everything so that it time it times perfectly you're in position perfectly you don't even know how you got there did a flat tire make it happen did you get laid off from your job? Make it happen. What made that happen? Did you end up being sick for three weeks and you couldn't work? Did it happen during that time? Are you listening? Are you peering your eyes in expectancy? Because see, God wants us to believe and wait and expect, which means we ought to reach up and wait for God to put something in our hand. We are to serve the Lord while we're waiting on the Lord. We ought to be about our father's business, be about seeking his face, not just his hand. And what God does is he honors he honors us. Now, you have to remember, no matter what, when he says, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Woo! What are you willing to put your feet on? What are you willing to stand on right now? What are you willing to put your hands to, get a hold of? What are you willing to step out on? Do you remember the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark? Here's a perfect example of faith. That man got to a certain point through that obstacle course where he was trying to make out what the symbolic reading was saying. And he comes to a cliff. And there's a big chasm between him and the other side, which is the side he has to get to. But he can't get there because there's no bridge. There's no way to go around. There's no way to go above or below. It's a long, deep, I believe the word is crevice. Crevice. If I'm wrong, forgive me. But it's a long way down, miles down there. Now, so what does he have to do? He's got to go by the words and figure out what it means. And he realizes he's got to step out on faith. It's the faith that will get him across to the other side, which means he's got to step out on nothing. And the first time he goes, he almost falls, he stumbles. But then when his foot goes down, something comes up to meet his foot. And when he feels there's something solid there that he can't see, he takes dirt and he flings it and he sees that, that the pathway all the way across. But he wouldn't have seen it had he not believed enough to even pick the dirt up and test it. Test the spirits. See if they be of God. And what did he do? He walked on invisibility to get to the other side. And the dirt let him know where the pathway was when he came back so he could run to safety. He could cross again. 
at the exact same point. There are some of you right now, God wants you to take a leap of faith right during this darkness, right during this crazy time. You may be able to get a business loan that you would never be able to get a year ago or two years ago. Hmm. Just like Milton and I didn't have two nickels to rub together. Neither one of us could qualify to buy a house. But when the real estate crash came down and the prices came down, the Lord brought this house within reach to meet our financial income. We would never have been able to buy this house at 165000 which was on the market years ago. At a hundred and something thousand, ninety thousand, eighty four thousand, as the crash kept diminishing the prices. But what happened? One day the Lord taps me on my spiritual shoulder and says, Look, oh, turn on your computer. I've got something for you. And the $84,000 house dropped to $74,000. Milton could only qualify for $72,000. We offered sixty-eight. dollars The bank accepted our first offer within four days. It was on and cracking, baby. Voila. So my point to you is, are you willing to take the leap. All I knew about California was Pasadena and Altadena. That's all I knew. LA, Glendale, you know, other places. But I didn't know jack about this place except where my brother lived. So the point is, God will take you to places you've never been before. He'll take you to do things you've never done before. He'll take you to own things you've never owned before. And he will let the calamity of the world bring it within your reach. A whole new world with new horizons to pursue. No one to tell us no, or where to go, or say we're only dreaming. I'm telling you, God has a whole new world for you. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 12, and we're closing with that. Deuteronomy chapter 12. I hope this encourages you, because there are some things that you never, never, never had in your sights. God wants to show you a whole new way, a whole new world, a whole new pathway, a whole new opportunity, a great big giant door that you didn't even know mm -hmm. was waiting for you with your name on it, baby. All right. <laughs> now, this is the condition. See, some of you think you can live haphazard. You can obey when you want to. When you don't feel like it, you can do what you're big and bad enough to do. You can say what you're big and bad enough to say. And oh, well. Mm -hmm. But see, this is the time where you can't allow yourself a license that comes straight from the world. You can't allow to yourself to receive the license from the devil, to receive the script from the devil's dialogue. You can't allow your emotions to indulge in the devil's tricks and his manipulations. You have to keep yourself above, not below. You're not the tail, you're the head, not the tail. Satan wants you to think you're the tail and he's the head. No, don't get it twisted. You are the head, not the tail. Starting at verse one. These are the statutes and judgments which ye shall observe to do in the land which the Lord God of thy fathers giveth thee to possess it all the days that ye live upon the earth. Ye shall utterly, utterly, see y'all tolerate too much and you wonder why your progress is so slow at a snail's pace. You shall utterly destroy, destroy y'all, not pamper, not set aside, not bury, destroy all the places wherein the nations which you 
which ye shall possess serve their gods upon the high mountain and upon the hills and under every green tree and ye shall overthrow their altars and break their pillars and burn their groves with fire and ye shall hold down the graven images of their gods and destroy the names of them out of that place ye shall not do so unto the Lord your God, but unto the place which the Lord your God shall choose out of all your tribes to put his name there, even unto this habitation shall ye seek, and thither ye shall come, and thither ye shall bring your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithe, your heave offerings of your hand, your vows, and your free will offerings, and the firstlings of your herds and of your flocks, and there ye shall eat before the Lord your God, and ye shall rejoice in all that ye put your hand unto, ye and your households, wherein the Lord thy God hath blessed thee. Ye shall not do after all the things that we do here this day. Every man whatsoever is right in his own eyes, for ye are not as yet come to the rest and to the inheritance which the Lord your God giveth you. But when ye go over Jordan and dwell in the land which the Lord your God giveth you to inherit, when he giveth you rest from all the enemies round about so that ye dwell in safety, then there shall be a place which the Lord your God shall choose to cause his name to dwell there. Thither ye shall bring all that I command you. You have to understand there are conditions. He's got all these commands and all these directions and all these principles that we are to live by. And the thing that I want to share with you is, yes, we are saved by grace. We can't earn salvation by works. However, it's the works that determine the quality of your life. Much obedience brings much blessing. Much disobedience opens the door for many curses. Remember that. So even though you're saved by grace, your life is not to stay where it was when you came through that door, the door being Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. As long as you are doing everything in your power, or at least as much as possible, as much as you understand, God wants in your life, God wants from your character of integrity, patience, love, kindness. He understands some of you are wounded. He understands some of you revel in self-pity because of your woundings, your brokenness, your hurts. He understands some of you deal with personality disorders. He understands that. He understands one minute you're up, the next minute you're down, one minute you're loving, the next minute you're hateful. He knows you're on shaky ground because he's still healing you. But if as long as he sees you trying, putting your best foot forward for the Lord, not for people, for the Lord. And as a result of doing it for the Lord, you do it unto people. Your blessings will be more abundant because your blessings are conditional. Salvation is by grace. Blessings are conditional. Remember that. So don't make excuses for your little fallacies. Don't make excuses when Jack wants to jump up out the box. Don't make excuses for that. 